Welcome back, guys. It's Kibla Ahmed Art for the Brothers Geek Out podcast. I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to Risha for joining us, who's Trini phot- photographer, Trini toy photographer, Trini toy photographer. I've got to get that right. Uh, <laughs> Trini photographer. <laughs> Trini photographer. Photographer. That's right. photographer. Yeah. photographer. Okay, you know what? Look at that. See, uh, that's an awesome name as well. Uh, but guys, massive, massive thank you again for always joining in on the podcast. I want to say uh, we're on all streaming platforms. So if you watch us on YouTube and if you're on a commute, you could always check us on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. There's so many, guys. There's, there's loads there. And then make sure you follow us on our social media networks as well, the Brothers Geek Out podcast. And today's episode is going to be a geek out session with Risha. And we're going to be talking about her passions and how she got into what she was, what she is doing, and general life stuff as well, guys. We're going to geek out. We're going to talk about movies, comic books, toys. We're going to talk about all sorts. Uh, but I'm going to start off with. We've been following each other on TikTok for a little while now, uh, and I love this community on TikTok at the moment. And how did you get into your toy photography? Well, um, so I am primarily a doctor by profession. That's what I do. And um, I started my toy photography, I would say, about four years ago. No, now it'll be about five, five, six years ago is yeah. time has flown. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, it, it mainly started because I enjoy photography, regular, mm-hmm. you know, nature and whatnot. Um, but I always had, I always collected little action figures. Not much, not like how I collect now, but um, I used to collect a couple action figures. Yeah. And I wanted to just kind of test out my photography skills using the action figures and somewhere along the line on Instagram, I stumbled across the toy photography community and things just kind of snowballed from there. It, it just went downhill or uphill. It depends on how you look at it. <laughs> uphill, 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 uphill. Because uphill. Be, 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 being a, I, I can understand being having a bit of creativeness inside you, kind of uh, yeah. when you have a passion in the, the content that we already get when it comes to the yeah. type of uh, action. What was the action figures you were collecting at the time before... You went into this. So at the time, one of the first action figures I had was that um, was a Joker. It was actually a McFarlane Joker. Um, the one with the long trench coat. I'm not sure exactly the name of him. Yeah. He had like a white shirt, a long trench coat. A really nice figure, actually. Yeah. And um, I had that and a couple of Batman figures. So I actually started off with, you know, Batman figures primarily, like most people probably, I suppose. And then, um, yeah, I got the Dark Knights, the, the set that they had, the... Um, I had that set and it broke, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, and that was way before when I realized that people could fix toys. So that's right. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. So I, I had those, and then I don't know. I just kind of stumbled across more and more toys and got into Funko Pops. Now I I basically collect anything, you know, from Lego to Funko Pops to Marvel Legends to yeah. Necker. Oh, it is just it's too much and so much so many good figures now. So that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm I'm going back to like the early eighties and nineties comparing to the type of products we get now. Like mm-hmm. it's just amazing like how good and quality yeah. they are. Uh like I'm loving the Todd McFarlane series at the moment now. Mm-hmm. And I never, I, 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 I've always collected like hot toys and maybe some of the Marvel legends, like Marvel stuff. But Todd right. McFarlane toys at the moment now, it's like, oh no, I'm building a little collection. <laughs> they're very affordable. They're very affordable too. So that's, that's right. always they're affordable and they have a they have good sculpts, you know. So at the end of the day, they do make for very good toy photos, you know. The posability, not always great, but I mean they, they make good figures to just take pictures of and it's also characters we never got before, you know. That's you right. Know, before that's we right. used to we used to get the, the standards, you know, Batman, okay, you know, but now we're getting all the little variations and you know, from all exactly. the multiples is great. <laughs> it's no. great. We do, we do, we do. Uh, what was the, the 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 first comic book character that kind of you looked at and said, "I've got a, a bit of real reliability with it." Like you 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 see yourself in this character. Which one was it? Seeing myself in a character. Mm. Um, 
I don't feel like I ever came across any that I, I it would probably have to be some manga, but I would have to be like Naruto. Okay. You know, I kind of I feel I feel Naruto. You know, the, yeah. the hope and the you know the drive to be better. That's uh, right. A lot of the comic books I tend to read tend to be darker. Okay. So <laughs> I tend to read the DC comics and yeah. the Batman's and the. And I especially enjoy reading Joker, so no, I don't. I definitely should not see myself in Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I I appreciate the brilliance in Joker, you know. Mm-hmm. And the, but but I mean, the, the problem is the comics I like reading are not necessarily the people that I relate to the best. Is mm-hmm. I think I just like reading about the characters that I do not understand the best. That I yeah. cannot put myself in their shoes, and it's like wow. How did you come up with this? Okay, all right, no problem, no problem. But yeah, no. I definitely I think recently I realized how much I enjoyed reading Joker when I looked through my collection and realized that I had a lot of standalone Joker books and you know whatnot. And I was like, okay, I, I do like Batman anymore. My son likes the bigger toys, so he goes after my Hulk <laughs> and my what? Yeah, yeah. He he goes after the bigger toys and he comes and. I think he really likes his stormtroopers, even though he hasn't seen any of the movies or any of those things. He, he way too young, but he he goes after the stormtrooper for some reason. The heavy Mandalorian <laughs> and my Hulk, the Red Hulk, especially I think the size of it, you know. And I don't mind because it's an extremely steady character. So go they ahead, are. go ahead. They are. <laughs> they are. They are. They are. They are. Uh, your photography skills was it something that you picked up along the way, or did you study some photography? No, I, oh, wow. like I said, I did medicine. So I, oh. I literally, everything I learned, I learned, I can happily say I learned from YouTube. <laughs> oh, wow, cool. I, I am a YouTube learner. So I would, <laughs> I would see something and a lot, a lot of it is asking questions because the good thing is what I always admired with the toy photography community is that they're always so willing to help each other. So That's you right. would see somebody take a cool photo and say, hey, how, how did you do that? <laughs> And they would say, and now behind the scenes stuff is a lot more popular than it used to be. Like right. now people putting out, a, like it's, it's routine that people would show you the behind the scenes. That's but right. before that, I, I could not figure out how people did a lot of the stuff that they did. So getting those figures up in the sky, I used to be like, okay, should I throw it up and try to snap the photo really quickly? <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. You know? But now I learned about flight stands and, you know, eventually. That's amazing. But, um... Yeah, but all my photography, I, I have a couple of friends who do photography for a living. Um, and I, you know, kind of saw them also. That's why I learned the basics of camera, the camera, the ISO and the aperture and all these things. Mm. That's how I learned about those things. And then it was a lot of trial and error and mm-hmm. just, just playing around. And But, but YouTube, YouTube was my teacher. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I could confident. And I learned Lightroom on Photoshop. I did a small, very one-day course on Lightroom from another photographer, but short of that, YouTube, YouTube, mm. YouTube. <laughs> no, it's an amazing yeah. tool, amazing tool, and I, and I feel some people need to get on it because there is so much behind the scenes and so much things. That I, I When I first started doing art videos on YouTube, uh, I didn't realise how much it will help others, but then yeah. the feedback I got, well, like, when I asked people about video editing and what did you use and, like, I do a bit yeah. of photography myself. My background has a bit of photography, but then there's like some yeah. amazing stuff that people were doing. And the response was like amazing to see this community tell you how to do it and understand it. Uh, like I, I, I genuinely still love photography now. I know my artwork takes over more, but a lot of people helped me when it came to video editing. Again, I learned that off YouTube as well. So yeah. We, we've got a I've seen great community of uh, creators out there that help us. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I love and I, I love the fact that the community is so encouraging that, you know, people just want everybody else to learn and, and, and be good mm. and improve. That's and, right. you know, is especially like with toy, like I love the fact that the toy community always cheering each other on and kind of, you know, featuring each other's work and, yeah. you know, is, is amazing. It's just a, is a, is a really amazing community to be a part of. And I, I'm so happy that I stumbled across it because honestly in Trinidad, people collect toys. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, there is a community of people that collect. Definitely not like you guys, well, people would collect in the US um, or even abroad where you can walk into a store because we can't, our toy stores in Trinidad do not carry toys like these, right? I can't, <laughs> we don't have targets, we don't have a wall. Uh, I can't just walk in and buy these toys, you know? Yeah. But we do have a huge collecting community. 
Okay. Um, but you know, like learning from YouTube and all these things is just phenomenal. And being part of that international community and making these connections, oh, it's amazing. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. That's a. Uh, it is a great feature that we get the chance to. I mean, I'd never have been able to do this with you if I didn't jump on TikTok and see the amount of work and people I've met. So it, as I say, for creators, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And again, you're right. Back in the early 2000s, it was really hard to get. We had comic book shops. We didn't have many like collectible toys. Uh, it's only mm-hmm. later on uh, that we got some of them coming in, but the prices were so expensive for imports. Yeah. And then it was like uh, my brother moved to Hong Kong and I was like, oh, my God, you are in it now. So as soon as I visited him, I remember I came back with a, a luggage full of collectibles, all hot toys and things oh. like that. I, I threw away my clothes. I threw away my clothes. <laughs> I don't need these clothes. I, all I want is these collectibles. Uh, we do not need clothes. Clothing is optional. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wrong podcast. When, what was uh, so? When did you start getting into comics and 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 things like that? Um, honestly, I have read comics. I probably one of the first comics I read was Batman Hush. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll be honest with you. So I mean. I grew up in a Trinidadian Indian household, right? So mm-hmm. we are like an Indian household on steroids. That's, that's our Trini. So <laughs> my, my literally, I, and I do not fault my mother. I read a lot. And yeah. I always enjoyed looking at comic books and like yeah. looking at, oh my God, look at the artwork and all these things. And my mom would look at me and said, say, I am not paying all that money for something this thin that you're going <laughs> to read out in an hour or less, depending. Yeah. Because I would read fast i would mm. read you know those nancy drew books in like one day and i would read it out to my mom would be like hey 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 slow down slow down i cannot afford it <laughs> <laughs> i cannot afford it to keep so things like action figures and yeah. comic books like i always liked them mm-hmm. but it was not one it wasn't accessible so because the price you know in trinidad it would just be like exorbitant hey sorry about that <laughs> that's all right that's okay oh we get we get calls randomly, even though we're not on call. You know, like with this used to sort out. So yeah. No, I totally understand. Totally understand. And I, I work I work last night, so that's why that's why I still got a call. I finish work. We work at twenty four hours now, so I finish eight a.m. to eight a.m. the next day. So it's eight thirty now. So I think they still taught well. You know, <laughs> yeah, with a little, you know, extra <laughs> extra call. That's all right. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so where was we? Right. Uh, Oh, you have to help me with that one. I got very distracted with the call. <laughs> that's all right. That's fine. So we, we were, were talking talk- about comics. You comics, asked me that's what right, was my yeah. first comic. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, the first right. So the first comic I did read was Batman Hush, and mm-hmm. that in it, it blew my mind. Right. <laughs> so I think that's why I love anything Jim Lee, like you know yeah. any kind of Jim Lee artwork and Jim Lee Batman, especially. I think I always like the the style, his style of drawing Batman and everything. Mm-hmm. So. After that, I started, that's when I got into the, the killing joke. And, you know, so most of my comics that I have are yeah. actually Batman comics, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really do enjoy reading it. I, I've read a couple others now. So ever so often, I get my hands on some more comics. And I'm trying to get myself more educated in comics, I should mm-hmm. say. Um, but, yeah, I, I have been reading comics. But it's been mostly Batman, to be honest with you. No, he's a great character. Very cool character, yeah. I think. Jim Lee uh, really brings a good presence to the way he draws him as a character. Uh, I mean, I was a big fan of the X-Men comics, so seeing Jim Lee move to Marvel and come to DC and then the way he does Batman and his characters is just, it just looks amazing. Like, uh, yes, I was very lucky enough to meet him at the Birds of Prey premiere. And it was a really, really (laughs) geek out moment for me because my friend was there and he was like, Oh, Jim Lee's here. And I didn't hear him because he was a couple of seats behind me. And I was like, I don't know what you're saying. And then he met me after the film and said, Jim Lee is here. And I'm like, what? And <laughs> luckily he was, he was, he was just around and he was talking to fans. And then oh. I, I went up to him and I was like, I didn't even know what to say, to be honest. I, I, I as an artist myself and, uh, and being privileged by his artwork, I had a moment of, it, uh, kind of a bit emotional because that's probably the the for me was the one person in this time in my lifetime if I meet anybody 
it needs to be Jim Lee. Uh, and, yeah, I would love to just meet him, but I think I might just be like, I love your work. Yeah. You are really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that might just be all I'll be able to say. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, not a, I, I probably should collect myself before, you know, I, I'll plan in case I ever meet him. I'll approach him, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, same. I, I said the same thing, you know, your work's been inspiring. Thank you for your he does YouTube tutorials that he did with somebody else. And uh, it really helped me to get back into art again. So uh, that was my, it was really just to say thank you really. And then I kind of froze yeah, after yeah. that. And then, uh, yeah, it's been, that was amazing. Absolutely amazing to meet Jim Lee. That was uh, us just absolutely nuts, but. I am we, jealous. I am, I, I must say, I am jealous. <laughs> don't worry. You know, the universe works in amazing ways and, uh, for me personally, it's something that's never crossed my mind. But now I write a list of like what's going to happen this year, what I'm going to do, what how I do it, how I plan it. Oh, um, that's nice. That's nice. So it's like visualization. I always look at it. So I've got a board here. I look at this board every the vision, morning. The vision board. The vision right, board. Right, yeah. Right. So, but yeah, yeah. some things just have like that happened by mistake. I never had his name down on the list. That happened by mistake. <laughs> so pure chance not mistake not mistake pure chance that happened so so uh, i was lucky enough to experience that but what Serendipity. i was yeah exactly <laughs> exactly that exactly that uh so you recently you're a big batman fan what did you think of the movie i loved it i know you <laughs> did i, I absolutely <laughs> loved it <laughs> um you see so in trinidad like okay we have you know you have two segments of people you have you have people who you know, as usual, people who geek out and, you know, know the comics and know Batman, and you know, really. And then you have people who watch, just watch the movie because it's a movie and it, mm -hmm. well, that wasn't good, but I loved it. I yeah. I really appreciated everything about it. Like, I think I was talking about it um, yesterday, so, and I was telling somebody, I was like, I don't think people understand that this is actually Bruce Wayne, like, the, the initial, like, it is not just the physical aspect of it, like Dark Knight. Like Dark Knight focus, okay, I lifted weights, I got strong, yeah. I did karate. But this actually showed you the mental aspect. And what I liked about it is that they actually showed you him losing himself to yeah. Batman. Like he, 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 and that happens. Everybody, when they get into something, and worse yet, if they get into fighting crime and vengeance, you're going to lose peace of yourself. And he got obsessed. And I love the fact that he, they focus so much on the fact that his mental health, you could see that it was being affected. That's right. He wasn't sleeping. The people, the person closest to him was very concerned as opposed to the other movies where Alfred was like, what do you need, Master Wayne? You know, but yeah, yeah, here, that's he right. was like, you know, Bruce, you know, what we're doing, you know, like, I, I am concerned <laughs> about you, you know, like, we're doing it. You could see, you know, yes, Alfred trained him, but at the, that, well, they hinted to it, but I mean, <clears> at the end of the day, you know, like, you could see Bruce being just a young angry male and he just right. kind of lost himself with no guidance whatsoever and it was good i really and then you could see where like i like the fact that with you know um selena kai like she came in and you, you could see she trying to bring out the the love in him and mm. he he interested but he's still there like hey vengeance vengeance i need to <laughs> i need to do my vengeance you know so i i liked it and i know people say it was slow paced but i think a lot of people went into the movie thinking it was a typical superhero marvel that's, that's you know right. yeah boom 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 this this took time to build a, a universe essentially you know that's right that's right an entire universe and it's set groundwork for i mean look at the amount of spin-off series that potentially come in from this you oh, know? of course so of course literally we want to know every single part of that universe we want <laughs> i want to know about penguin i want to know about what happened to see i want to know everything just everything so that's right that's right it is great i loved it and awesome. I, I love the fact that it took so much effort to do it you know like to make it this way and they didn't care what anybody thought they just they did it right no no of course of course i uh <laughs> so i got to so one of my great things of this year was getting to interview the producer uh dylan clark and matt reeves and like i'm a big fan of nirvana and i asked them what what was the the background in that because it was like you got you put Nirvana, like he, he was listening yeah, to Nirvana yeah. because he put the volume down. So you're like, what, what, what made you, what made you do that? Like, what, 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 what was it? And he was like, you know, I was, I was writing the script and I was listening to Nirvana in the background and it fitted perfectly. And I was like, 
it was the best way to kind of ground a character because yeah we all listen to music and the fact that he got like we got to see that i was like oh my god that's so amazing uh but the groundwork to build that universe is their process was amazing i'm glad they took their time on this film because having to see batman in his detective mode was probably one of the best things ever best things ever Definitely. because we've never got it in any of the films they showed a little bit in dark knight rises with christian bale but they didn't and maybe a little bit in the the dark knight but they didn't yeah. really really show more uh yeah yeah this it had a very comic feel to it you know you could you could literally see it like if it came straight all to the comic books and I like that they took the time to do that and they, they made it different from all the other Batman movies and all the other superhero movies for that for that matter, mm. you know? So it was great. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. I just feel like we are in great times where we get to see all of the stuff come together now. And it's yes, it's 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 really rewarding for fans like us that really love the content. We love the comic books. And you know, I I respect everything that's come before, but to get something a bit more of a fresh take. That that yeah. really really got to me. That like emotionally because I was like, finally we get to see something like this. It was refreshing, and I didn't it even is. feel like three hours. Well, I like I said in a lot of things. I grew up watching Indian movies. That did not bother me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Bollywood I knew guys, what to do. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Bolly, Bolly, Bollywood preps you for these movies. Bollywood preps. Bollywood you for these preps movies. you for life. I am sorry. <laughs> I was accustomed to it. I was just there, like, cool. Let's go. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <cautious. laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, are you working on any, any current projects at the moment that you can speak about, or you you're is it secret? Um, no, no, no. My toy photography, like, honestly, is just like, okay, I would literally sit here by my desk and, and stare at the characters and be like, what do I want to do, you know? <laughs> but <laughs> I haven't done any big projects. I think because of my time constraints with work, yeah. I, I do have a fixed schedule, per se. Mm -hmm. So I can't commit to, well, you know the schedule. <laughs> to try to commit to do something and sit down is, like, so... It's so difficult, but mm. um, unfortunately, nothing big coming up right now. I just kind of do it myself and just enjoy it myself and trying to build my TikTok and all that. Um, I really enjoy TikTok because, to be honest, this is one of the few times like Trinidadians. So in Trinidad, people don't really know too much or anything pussy about toy photography. You know, people yeah. know that, oh, people collect these little action figures, you know. Mm. But as to doing photography, doing special effects and all that, people don't know much about it. That's so right. right now, I think because TikTok given actually allowing me to share my work with a Trinidadian audience, I am just trying to get people to know my work and be like, hey, there's a toy photographer in Trinidad. You know, um, awesome. I am probably one of the few people I could confidently say that that do toy photography almost every day of my life. Like I would, even yeah. if it's just you know, posing my figures in prep for, you know, our next shot. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I could confidently say that I am the one who does this in Trinidad. So I kind of want to inspire more people to, to do it because mm. it's a very good way to stay creative and, you know, bring out some extra energy or mental energy that you have going on, you know. So that that's pretty much my drive right now, building up my TikTok. and trying to get more people involved in toy photography and all that and collecting and all that, so... That's amazing because you you you're you're passionate about like the way you process it because it's very hard to schedule family work life uh, trying to fit everything around it is 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 very messy at times but the fact that you're still sure. doing it and you're still pushing it out is inspiring and people that do want to get into it need to know that it can be done yeah it's yeah. Just, where you can fit it in basically in the day it is fitting it in for a large proportion of the time my toy photography was done at night when my son was asleep like <laughs> not intentionally but just because that's the only time i had yeah so that's how i started doing you know indoor shoots and trying now i'm because we don't have too many dioramas it is not accessible anything i have to get in trinidad i need to order online i need to you know actually go online and find somebody and order it and yeah. In and that's just cost right so now we starting to like you know are trying to get some dioramas and have the setups and all these things so 
But other than that, I tried. I tried to do my shoots with natural, you know, a lot of natural yeah. backgrounds and That's stuff, right. you know. So I would walk with my fingers. I would actually walk with my fingers and, and work. Um, thankfully, <laughs> I, I where I work, it actually has a lot of grass and a lot of, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. So it works well. And um, I just try to squeeze in my toy photography wherever, wherever I could, whenever I could, and just get some content. And well, now with TikTok, I actually have to try to make some video to go with the toy photography. <laughs> so it's it's been i've been adding to my workload so to speak but it's been good and i have been enjoying it i think tiktok made it a little bit more fun you know just interacting with people a little bit more because instagram has been i don't know it, it kind of dying out almost in a it way is. i don't want to say it dead but it just it just isn't the same no. and n- yeah yeah so now like your audience reach like tiktok actually getting your new people and you know it's, it's good i i enjoy it no, of course, that's right. new ways to be creative, yeah. Of course, of it course. Is- I, I, I've noticed that as well. And I work in the marketing department in the company I work for. So social okay. media does play a big part, but most of the social media networks are slowly dying out. People like myself, I, I don't use Facebook. Uh, I, I keep Instagram there just to repeat what I've done on TikTok on there. Uh, right. And you just want to make it easier. It's, it's sometimes hard to work on four or five different platforms. Oh, uh, yes. It's definitely. hard enough trying to survive in the world. So I don't want an extra <laughs> extra thing to do. So trying to make it easy. And I think TikTok still has another a year or two for for any content create to grow on, as long as the, yeah. the stuff connects to people. I mean, to be honest, I've never been a numbers person, but the growth on TikTok and how quick it happens is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Same. The same. Yeah. yeah. I on my Instagram, I think I just just crossed like three thousand and like a little bit over three thousand. And I've been on Instagram for about five years, right? It's probably about five years. I joined TikTok last year, and this was just on a whim. I didn't, you know, yeah. like in Trinidad TikTok, it, it just started to kind of catch on. We always a couple of months, you know, behind, right? And I've already hit about twenty five hundred. I definitely crossed twenty five hundred followers on TikTok. And it is it is pretty cool because it's like it's Very. not toy photographers alone. Instagram is mostly the toy photography community, but TikTok actually have a lot of my followers are just regular people, which is what I like. I like the fact that it's normal, not just collectors, you know, other That's collectors right. looking at your work. I love the fact that people who not interested even or didn't even think they were interested. You know, I've had a couple of nurses and they um I'm a consultant in um in ICU, right? And yeah. I've had a couple of nurses come and say, Hey, I saw your videos on TikTok and <laughs> it's like I didn't know you do those toy things and yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh that's awesome. No, it's good. It's yeah. it's it's amazing because it's how you how you can it's how you transcend to others the way I see it. And the way people yeah, see yeah. it, because I again, I grew up with a strict Muslim background. My family didn't understand why I loved art and comic books so much. And I'm like, hold up. My uncle introduced me to this. My uncle gave me my first comic book. My uncle took <laughs> me to draw. That's my dad's youngest brother. So we grew up oh. like he's only we found out the other day. He's only seven years older than me. So okay, uh, he's, okay. he's like my older brother. So we I learned a lot from him. Uh, yeah. And then creative side as well. I, I know my mum has creative side as well, and my dad does, but they're so strict. They don't want to say it. Bless them. They're so strict. Uh, you know, they just couldn't understand it. But only in the past 10 years, they were like, oh my God, he's actually really good at what he does. And I'm like, you guys well, are so late. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. That's my mom, right? So, Indian household, so my, you know, the whole thought process, you have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer. We, we, you know, we are so cliche, but so I, I did it. I became a doctor and I enjoy my job. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I love, I love being able to help people and I love being able to reach out to people and, you know, have this access to people's yeah. lives almost in a way. But, you know, now I, I heard my mom recently tell him, tell him, she's like, you know, my mom is a teacher and my yeah. mom said, you know, a couple of the teachers in my school, they see a little toy things. Yeah. And she was like, but they're nice, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten my mom to the point where she would willingly buy me a toy, but, uh, you know, for my they birthday this year, like, well, no, I doubt. For my birthday this year, my husband bought me like three action figures and my oh. mom just there watching 
So and she watched me. Prisha, when are you going to stop with them things? <laughs> and, and my poor husband there. Yeah, my poor husband there like, Mom, that, that costs as much as a, a, like jewelry, you know. It, it actually costs as much as jewelry. And she's like, Prisha, when are you going to stop with them things? <laughs> and I said, it's like, I'm never, I'm never going to stop. And she, I think my poor mom and my sister too, like, who not into these things, they just watch me and be like, Oh dear Lord, because I think I get nerdier as time goes on. Uh, we were talking about family and yeah, yeah. how hard they, 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 they find it with our geekiness and our nerdiness. Uh, <laughs> my dad always tells me, why are you still wearing superhero t-shirts? You're like 40 years old. And I'm like, this is never going to change. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's stuck with us now. I, I, I adore it. I, I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's... I think I have gotten and worse yet with, with COVID and everything and not going anywhere. Mm. I have started living in t-shirts and I, my t-shirt collection is quite, it's getting quite extensive. <laughs> uh, but the good thing is, uh, you know, my sister is rather supportive. I So normally she buys me, you know, very floral shirts and, you know, tries to get me out of these. <laughs> and then um, this year, so she bought me a Deadpool and a Link t-shirt. So I was like, oh, mm, nice. she's like, I give up. I just give up with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Why not? I Why not? A win. I it as a win. I as a win. Of course it is. Of course it is. Definitely a win. Definitely a win. Uh, is there any major movies this year that you're excited to see? Hmm. I think I just was hyped over Batman and mm -hmm. Spider-Man. That was my two favorites. That's right. I was That's right. just I was just extremely hyped over that. And now I'm just kind of taking it as it comes out. Do you have any that you're excited to see? I'm not, uh, I'm not too keen on Mobius. I, 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 I'll watch it, but, you know, I'm not... You know what? Know. It's a good watch, but it's not... It's difficult with movies because I know that amount of hard work that goes into this, but I just want to know who makes the decision on some things. You're like... <laughs> I, my my friends always joke. One of my friends, my best friend, actually, she, she always jokes and says that... She's like, don't listen to Risha's advice on superhero movies. Risha loves all. <laughs> <laughs> all, all. <laughs> no matter how crappy it is we show go. and because with me i just happy to see the characters on screen that's right, that's right. And, and 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 existing in this universe and i think i'll just be happy it it'll take a really really bad movie to make me upset about it but listen it's it like this be terrible for me to get upset about it you know and it's like i like it <laughs> i'm the same look i'm we go back to the beginning of when all of this started. I think Blade was the one that started it off. Uh, and I love that movie to bits. Uh, but even when it came to movies like Ben Affleck's Daredevil, I still watch it to this day. Yeah, it was and bad. It was fine. It was fine. And, the th and, and I think what's happened now is it came to a point where the directors and the writers had a lot more creative freedom to do what they wanted to do. Then you had yes. Kevin Feige join Marvel and like they oh, just well, blew it out of the park. Yes, and with definitely. DC, we've had some troubles. Like I still enjoy the movies. Uh, yeah. But like Justice, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is absolutely amazing. I adore that movie. I'm happy that yeah. we got that movie. We live in a time where the fans said, oh, my God, what have you done to us? And we actually got this movie. Uh <laughs> But even like, you know, we're, we're lucky to get this great content. And I've always said that, like, as a as a kid growing up, I grew up with the cartoons and the comic books. I was really happy with what I saw there. And I'm now going to be even more happy to see these characters on there because. Yeah, yeah. Morbius is part of that Spider-Man universe. I know how much he 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 plays in that part of the universe. Uh, he's in the Blade universe. It's like. I was happy to see it on the screen as well. And but there. It, like my 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 initial review of it was that the studios played too much issue, like editing on this too much editing and Spider Man right, No Way Home yeah. Spider Man No Way Home that, that movie was just yeah yeah oh uh, that's what caused I, I the went... problems <laughs> it did it caused I, the um, problems but it's a great yeah. movie. Okay, okay. I, I will take my problem is the time, as usual, every, mm. like everybody's problem, to actually go to the cinema and, mm. you know, get a, baby, get a babysitter and, and, and go and sit, uh, you know, like, all right, for instance, with Spider-Man, my husband knew that I would go crazy if I saw any spoilers and he literally <laughs> watched me and said, yeah, what? You go. I will stay home with the child. You go. <laughs> I, so I 
I didn't ask for any company. I didn't call any friends. I just went by myself, buy a ticket in the middle of the day, and sat down by myself and watched the movie. <laughs> you know, I take my little cry. I, I do my little thing. Okay. And I was oh, happy. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, of course, of course, that is because I, I'm the same. I go cinema by myself. I can watch a movie. If I love it, yeah. you know, five, six times, I'm coming to six times for Batman and I'm still going to go back and watch it again. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, I think it's one of those things where we're, we're always going to enjoy the characters that are on the screen, but we get these characters on the big screen. And I think Gerard Leto played a good Morbius, just the writing and the editing failed him. Right, but we see Morbius, right. it looks amazing. Like, I, I'm, I'm a visuals guy. I've been doing comic book artwork for 30 years almost. So right. seeing the visuals of this character being represented, is, it was, was, was pleasing for me. I think you just need to take it for what it is, you know. And, exactly. I mean, okay, people need to realize that not every movie is going to be perfect and not every, all the writer writing not going to be brilliant. And hey, all right, they're going to happen, but... For me, I would say I might have the same type of feeling towards it as you. I'd be like, ah, the story was, you know, okay. Like, let me say it was a predictable storyline. Mm. Predi- it was predictable, but the CG was so good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's my, I would take it for, you know, I would try to see the, the, the good to it, you know, at, at least course. that's my, because you no. know, a lot of work went into it and a lot of people put their heart and soul into it. And I don't know, it's just so hard to just break something on and say, that was terrible. That was just a waste of time. No, because of course, of course. A lot of effort was put into it, you know, so. Yeah, it is I'm what the it same. is. I'm the same, I'm the same, I'm the same. I always see the positive in things. Getting the content itself is just amazing. Yes. So that's where I just I, like seeing I'm the happy. content. Exactly that. I love I'm, it. I'm happy to see that, but. Uh, and I, I always tell my friends, you know, like, okay, when you look back at, you know, the old Batman, Batman and Robin, it was like okay, looking back on it now, it was it was terrible, but we enjoyed it. That's what that's what get. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly, and you know what? I might watch it again, and I might enjoy it again. But the point is, at the time, that's what got us into all these these things. You know, looking at the Batman, looking at them on screen. I don't care if he had nipples on his suit. I, I don't care. Back then, when I was a child. And that's what people, okay, Morbius is not made for kids, but a lot of the movies that we see, people break it down and they analyze it. And it's like, you know, it's made for kids, right? Like, you yeah. remember that, right? <laughs> like, I understand that, you know, okay, Batman not made, it have, not the DC, but it have shows that primarily made for kids. And you know that. And people, adults looking at it and want to criticize. And it's like, you know, if you were a child, you damn well enjoy it. And of course. Just, just calm down, calm down. They, yes. This was stuff from our childhood, but they're not making it for us. They're making it for them. Exactly. Exactly. It's a, it's a really good point you pulled there because I'm still a big kid. That's why I enjoy it. I still have that kid with me. That kid never yeah. left me. And I think people <laughs> find that quite hard to kind of realize that they're like, but Kibler, why? And I'm like, because I'm a kid. I, at heart, I'm a child. And I want to mm-hmm. be that child and have that imagination which we do in our yeah. creative work because it makes us happy. It makes that inner child happy. Yeah. And I can even like something like Encanto, like she absolutely adores it, but I adore it as well because of the family values it has in that yeah. movie. So it's yeah. like, yeah. that's the little kid in me that's still, yes, I understand it as an adult, but the little kid yeah. in me loves the animation, the, the, the magic of it, the, the music of it. Oh, yeah. I, I, that part of me would never leave and I think pe- a, a lot of people find that hard that we still have kids in us and they don't yeah I don't think it uh, some people look at it like in a bit of a bad light like you know it's so childish but I, I don't I, I enjoy myself I am thoroughly happy buying an action figure I am thoroughly happy sitting looking at my action figure <laughs> I am sorry if that does not bring you joy and Simple things like that bring me a lot of joy, you know. That's so- right. <laughs> oh, the joys of being in parenthood and responsibilities. Oh, trust me. I If there's one thing I understand. I, <laughs> I, usually if, if, Rai was, if Rai was home, I'd have him crawl and all of me going, who's that? Who's that? Who's that, <laughs> who's that boy? What's he saying? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> oh, bless, bless, bless. Cool, but I won't keep you any longer. What I was going to say is, if there was something that you would tell the listeners or somebody watching on YouTube about your process in your work to inspire them, what would it be? What would it? Hmm, that's a tough one, boy. Um, what would I say? I with me. So toy photography, there are many different ways to, to do toy photography. And I think the main thing with me that I realized is that a lot of times when I started off, I kind of started off looking at other photographers and I want to be just like them. And I want to do just like them and do their photos. And that starting off, that frustrated me quite a bit because mm. I would always be like, why don't my pictures look like this? You know, why? And I would always be trying to fight up. Maybe I need to buy more expensive figures. Maybe I need to get more accessories and I would always kind of be comparing myself to others and it is inevitable and it's it's not a bad thing I'm not somebody who said don't compare yourself because that's how you know you're growing mm -hmm. you know when you actually look at your photos but I think the important thing is to know what you want to do yeah. and what brings you joy and with me I for me I just want to be the best I could be and mm -hmm. not necessarily the best toy photographer because I can't compare to what some of the brilliance of some of these people out there. That's right. But I could be a better version of myself, which is a very cliche thing to say, but is it truth? And then when you look, like I even did a video on it on TikTok, like when you look at the numbers and you look at how other people growth is on TikTok and, and, and this and they go in viral and all these things, and it will frustrate you. And it, it was like for a while I was just like, okay, why nobody seen my videos? But then I realized, you know what? Make make videos and take pictures and do things that I would want to see. Mm -hmm. And if I look at my own photo and I'm impressed by my own photo, then other people are going to be impressed. Yep. And in a sense. So I just kind of stopped. Like I stopped myself and I was like, all right, Risha, just be creative, have fun and enjoy, like just enjoy the process and just keep trying to get better and learn new techniques. And the, I mean, we're in an era now where literally it is ridiculous, but information is at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. You could, you could look up on YouTube. You could reach out to other toy photographers and, mm -hmm. you know, even other creators because I, I draw, I don't want to say I draw comics because I do not draw comics. Like you all draw comics, <laughs> but I, I do a kind of web comic on Instagram, um, but it's medical, you know? Yeah. I do a medical web comic on Instagram and every single community I have made myself part of, I have kind of immersed myself and I have asked for help. And I think mm. that's the next important thing. Reaching out to other artists, other photographers and all these things, just asking, hey, how you did that? Or what do you call that technique? You know, and you can yeah. look it up. And you could, you could, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to compare yourself to others, but don't get too caught up comparing yourself to others. That's right. You need to know a benchmark. You need to know what's good, what's bad. But at the same time, you need to know what you're capable of and mm -hmm. try to do the best that you could do. So I think, you know, just keep an eye on the back of your mind, I think is important. And I'm sure if I answer your question properly, but that's. No, you did. You did. That's absolutely amazing. And, and, <laughs> What, what you said there is something that I relate to myself. You know, yeah. I've, I've done that plenty of times. I've looked at numbers, views and the rest of it. Yeah. And then I thought, you know what? Why don't I just make content for myself? Yeah, I that's, that was me. Because even with my TikTok, at one point I was getting, not frustrated, but kind of like, oh, okay. It's just, I don't think people looking at my TikToks and I don't think people care. And then I started realizing like, okay, the one or two videos that I made, with you know silly things like okay it's like hey go check this movie out people looking at it and people actually comment and hey Risha I actually checked the movie out because you recommended it and I was like oh okay so now yeah. I'm trying to like diversify a little bit more and you know that's why I have little segments with how to need and you know just just talking to Trinidadians because a lot of people don't know about the, the pop culture in Trinidad almost yeah. you know and what we have in Trinidad and a lot of people think everything is just online but you know I'm trying to get people educated so that's my drive now to kind of build a community a nerd community nice. <laughs> yeah that, that was kind of where i'm at right now with my uh work awesome. <laughs> and, um, yeah no that's great that's great i think a lot of people relate to that and as you said you don't focus on numbers or things like that 
you just want to give information out to people and making sure that they're yeah, enjoying yeah. themselves. I think that's yeah. the, the main message there is that we're going to compare. We're, as people, yeah. as human beings, we do that. But taking it to a level to, you know, as you said, you're enjoying the post that you do. And if yeah, you're enjoying yeah. that, who's not going to enjoy that? Because, yes, everybody's going to go through different things of how they're going to represent themselves yeah. when it comes to going because going on social media is is a brave thing i've had a lot of people tell me that because i have a lot of friends who would say well no I, i'm not going to I, i'm not like you i, I can't do videos and talk to, and i have told them i am not this person i i never used to be yeah i, I it, it it happened because i've had people say well i'm not really confident and when I think when you're young, like when I was younger, I was very confident. I mm. would go and, you know, do competitions and go on stage and read and play music on stage. And I, I didn't give a damn. I was good. Like as far as I was concerned, yeah. the best there is. And then like in your teenage years, you just kind of lose that confidence when you realize, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not the best there is. There, there are lots of people mm-hmm. who are far more confident, far more capable, speak better, play music better. And then you realize, well, okay, I'm not that good. But now it's kind of, I think now we're in a, a era where you don't have to be the best and people, they're happy to indulge in your content. They, they're happy to encourage you. They're happy to listen to your crap. Mm. Like they, they, you don't have to be an expert in movies to talk no. about movies now. No. And I think it's amazing. Like I, I try to tell my friends, well, people, and anybody who talks to me who say, I can't do videos, I can't do this. And it's like, honestly, neither can I. But I just do it like I don't, I don't yeah. care. I just I just do it and I just having fun and eventually you know and I think what's inspiring I think with TikTok is like all right like how they use your review for the posters with Batman and thing and I was like I showed my husband I was like check this out it's literally yeah. like somebody from TikTok and he was like that's kind of cool and you know the fact that you know I'm um, sure had Goofy get to go to the Oscars yeah I was like this is a guy on TikTok like yeah that's he's right. not famous this that's is right. somebody who that's right you know like they're not even in news they're not even in media in a sense mm. and it's a regular person and you know i just think it's amazing the opportunities that people get in and the fact that you get to interview you get to interview people you know matt reason and oh, it's mm. amazing you know with social media that, it's powerful. you know you could be in it is it is and it is. you could it say what you want but it's it is amazing the fact that we could connect. All right, I'm in Trinidad. You in the UK. Years ago, we would have never known each other, spoken to each other, mm-hmm. any kind of interaction. And now we could do a podcast together. And just of be, course. you know, it's amazing what we could do and the connections that we can make now. So, you know, next time I come to the UK, I come in to check here, you know. But no, of course. It's cool. course. It's, it is amazing what, what we have now. And I think people need to appreciate appreciate that a lot of people bash social media and say that you know oh it's, it's so harmful but it's only harmful if you let it be of course you like- that's exactly that if you let it be harmful uh and you're not using it in a positive way to send out a positive message it's very difficult yeah. and i can understand yeah. the backlash that it gets but for me myself i post whatever i need to i respond to whoever i need to but i know my main focus is this little one here <laughs> And whatever <laughs> I do, whatever I do now is what I leave back for her. So like, yeah, even for me to have my name on a billboard is an absolutely, <laughs> I'm not an expert in movies. I just love the content. I'm not an Which expert in movies. Which is why yeah. when, when I posted and I told you, I am legitimately proud. Like when I see that, it's like, I, I'm, I'm not even proud because you're like my best friend. Right? It's just like, hey. It's one of us yeah. who did this, you know. Yeah. It's not this stush, like this kind of snotty kind of, oh, well, it's a good movie. You know, it's <laughs> literally a nerd just like us who just, you're just doing yourself. You're just enjoying yourself. Yeah. And look at where you could go. And I mean, I, I think it's, I think that in itself is just, like, it's so inspiring. I mean, yes, most, most people will not make a viral show and they wouldn't make a viral TikTok. They wouldn't go viral, get any more on a billboard. But, People see a work that would have never seen your work before. Mm-hmm. And people, no. I've had kids, well, you know, I've had people message me and like I've done a couple TikTok lives and some people come on and go, oh my God, I can't believe, I can't believe when I live with you. I was like, why? Mm. <laughs> and, and, you know, people actually excited to reach out to us, excited when you reply and it's like, 
I'm not really a big TikTok or popular or anything. Nobody really right. knows me. But these people are excited about it and it is yeah. is inspiring, you know, like of course the connections. Definitely so, is, definitely. It's just an inspiring moment. And it's great to connect with uh, the people that I've connected with. And it's funny because now I'm getting to meet a lot more TikTokers and people that I know across like uh, 80s, uh, 80s collection baby who lives in the States on the east side. I, yeah, we had a podcast yeah, yeah. as well. Uh, I'm waiting to get Chris on the show. I've had Sam on the show so far. So we're like, I'm getting to know a lot more people. And then when I was at the Morbius premiere, I got to meet a, a couple of other TikTokers that came up to me and said, Oh man, I love your content, man. How did you get your name on the Batman thing? And I'm like, I didn't do that. That was Warner Brothers. <laughs> you know, I I was lucky enough to see the movie before it came out. And they used my review. And my review was like, there wasn't many words. I'm not good with words. <laughs> like I could talk about it, but they used the, the couple of words that I did say. And it was like, like <laughs> you guys could have gave me warning because, you know, for me... <laughs> That, you know, it brought a tear to my eye because it was like, as you said, I'm a fan of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like for the past 30 years that I've gone through when it came to bullying at school or not knowing how to read, but comics helped me learn to read. Yeah. Uh, to come to a point where I share a, a billboard with the Riddler as well, because it was funny in school days. My my MC name when I used to when I used to do rap was Kibler the Riddler. <laughs> so the universe so cool. is such a great way that when they did the billboard, I didn't notice because I was excited. My name was on a billboard. My brother right. from Singapore said, I can't believe they put you next to the Riddler. And I was like, oh, my God. I oh yes you're right and because he was like <laughs> your name Kibler the Riddler and I was like I pulled out all of these photos of me because I used to be a big fan of Jim Carrey's Riddler from Batman Forever and was a good Riddler. <laughs> I used all my new era caps had the question mark I had t-shirts with question marks that's all I wore was question marks thinking <laughs> I was the MC version of the Riddler and you know 20 years down the line for that to happen is a weird manifestation of, as a fan, you know, I couldn't be truly yeah. blessed. Like I, I'm blessed totally, but Definitely. I'm no, I'm no I'm, professional or expert in that industry. I just which love the I content. think people appreciate. No, people appreciate. I think more than ever, people just like them doing things. Mm. Which That's right. you know, I think when things now started YouTube, everybody wants to know: Are you an expert? Are you the best at what you have? Because I don't want to listen to you if you're not the best at what you are. Mm. But now, it's kind of like, all right, let's grow together. Yeah. You're learning, I learn. So we go, you know? So it's great. <laughs> no. I think awesome. I'm just happy with how things go these days, you know? But you no. will get the trolls, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's standard. And I, I'm getting used to that. But everybody's fighting a battle. And there's only so much I can say. You know, mental health is a is a serious thing, and I think coming out of it COVID, is. It is. it's a it's a hard one. We all suffer it in different ways. Uh, so I don't call anybody out, Risha. Yeah. Where can the fellow listeners find you? Social media. This is your social media plugin. <laughs> I am on TikTok, Trini photographer, and Instagram. That's it for now. Um, haven't braved the YouTube um, aspect of it, but really just TikTok and Instagram. Same name, Trini Photographer. Could you definitely check my stuff out? I'll yeah. put it in the link <laughs> below, guys. So make sure you check out the description. Go follow her. Her work is absolutely amazing. I'm a big fan of it. I still love the, the Batman car thing you did. That was so cool. That was so cool. <laughs> and it's amazing. So guys, make sure you go check her work out. It's absolutely amazing. Go give her a follow. Uh, massive, massive thank you to everybody that listens into the podcast. All I can say is I'm, I'm blessed and thankful that people listening. Uh, we can, we stream on all platforms, guys. I'm not going to say all the names now. I, we stream on all platforms, guys, but make sure you follow us on social media. Our links are below as well uh, to keep updated on what we're up to. And uh, Risha, massive, massive, massive thank you for coming onto the show. Like, Thank you for uh, having uh, me. Apologies and thank you for your patience uh, while I dealt with all the madness going around. <laughs> same here, same here. <laughs> but uh, awesome. Hope to get you back on the show again one day. 
we could talk more more geek out we could pick a subject and we can tear it apart in our nerdy we ways can do that that'd Definitely. be awesome that would be awesome but uh have a wonderful day where you, you are and uh i'll catch and you up soon one. <laughs> Lara.